Hello YouTube. I'm going to make this video in response to some claims by Ravi Zakarias. See, someone asked a question at one of his lectures about an atheist who had became an atheist as a result of certain misogynistic elements, or perceived misogynistic elements, in organized and revealed religion. He responds to this with some rather unusual claims about both Christianity and atheism. Ravi, are you ready for a bit of fun? A bit of ponage? Because I sure am. Uh, uh, and at the, um, well, at the Q&A time, one guy, the fellow kept going like this, shot his arm up in the air and stood up and he said, you've been talking about God the whole time. He said, what on earth are you talking about? Well, the question logically to answer him was, are you an atheist? Yes. What is it you're denying? <laughs> what is it you're denying? That was Ravi Zakarias, and I would hope that that laughter was directed not because they thought his comment was particularly witty, but because they thought his supposedly logical response was laughable. However, that would be something I'd think if I had some actual faith in humanity. So here's the problem with his logical response. The reason that so many of us are atheists is that we don't know what they're talking about. We've checked a variety of their dogmas, and they often disagree. There are certain core attributes of a deity, but it's not necessarily well-defined when you say God what you mean. In all cases, however, they keep it sufficiently nebulous that you can't gather evidence on it, meaning that a skeptical atheistic agnosticism is really the only viable option. So, yeah, we'll stick with that. So when a woman or a man says they are denying the existence of God, what are they affirming in its place? She is actually affirming that this God or religion is not true. Atheism is. But if atheism is true, she has no value. If atheism is true, there's not even a point of reference for her worth. We are the product of primordial slime. Time plus matter plus chance, the accidental collocation of atoms, here we are. A blip on the radar screen or a screen of time. That's exactly what Bertrand Russell said. That this whole edifice is doomed to extinction. We are here by cosmic accident. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, first she reduces her own worth to nothing but material. Secondly, she's making a moral judgment. But in an amoral universe, how do you invoke a moral judgment? If this is a naturalistic framework, why is it morally wrong for God to say you're not of any worth? But it's because she's invoking a moral law and she's invoking worth, which basically tells me she's actually borrowing from the Judeo-Christian worldview in order to debunk it. What? What? You're a fucking moron. Okay, a rather persuasive moron, I'll admit, but... That was just stupid, man. You really believe that the absence of a celestial dictator, of a celestial authority, removes worth. You're saying that the only possible way for worth to exist is for it to be imposed, given as a gift by a dictator. I'm sorry, but my worth, and the worth of any other human being, is not derived from any authority. Our worth is inherent. It is something that we have and that we develop. It is an emergent property of consciousness and of sentience and of these beautiful abilities that we have. I mean, seriously, have you not read any atheistic philosophies at all aside from the science? It doesn't really look like you have. I mean, try some Ayn Rand. I don't agree with Ayn Rand, but objectivism provides a perfect moral framework in which humans have, for humans to have self-worth without a god, without any authority sanctioning that worth. I mean, check out how I get my morals and my moral worth. I can tell that I have worth. I can tell empirically from my own inner experience that I am someone who has autonomy and who has a moral value on myself. Then I can see that other people 
are pretty much the same as me in this regard, that they also will logically, from the principles of self-ownership, which we can derive pretty easily from empirical evidence, that they have rights and moral worth and such. It's not that hard of a concept. Ayn Rand was able to develop it, Bertrand Russell developed his own empirically based system of ethics, the man you just cited to show that atheism has no moral set of ethics. Christopher Hitchens has a ton of moral arguments, and I'm sure you're familiar with him. You're arguing from total ignorance of the atheistic position. What has happened, unfortunately, is the way our cultures have oppressed always find somebody to oppress. And as a result, we read that verse in a vacuum, and we don't read it all the way, the rest of the way. When you see him highlighting people like Sarah, people like Ruth, people like Deborah, and in the New Testament, you see the names of Phoebe and the names of Mary and all writ large, you see that he tells a man to love a woman the way Christ loved the church. That is the greatest compliment he ever paid you or me, that you were as valuable and you are as valuable as humanity is to him. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female. The Apostle Paul writes, so tell her, please don't read that out of context. Read the whole thing. Your reaction would be right if that's all that it's, uh, what it says there is this. Remember, where there is a plurality of the miracle in physical acts, there is also a plurality of judgment in physical expression. You will see this in Exodus, you'll see this in Genesis, where there's dramatic miracles, there are dramatic judgments as well. And that sin has a cost, and we always remember through this from whence we came. And the glory is through the seed of that woman he was going to bring the Redeemer ultimately. And I think that is what grace is all about. She should not read it in a vacuum. Tell her to take a good look at Christ and see his treatment of women. And I think she'll find out that there is no other worldview again. I repeat, no other worldview that gives the respect to womanhood that Jesus does. Okay. Oh, really, Ravi? So, you're saying that you've examined every worldview? There is no other worldview? Quite a bold claim. Unfortunately, it's clearly a false. Let's examine this on several levels. Number one, if it was in just a historical context and you were saying Jesus was a mere man, sure, I might buy it. I might buy that someone who treated women that well in that time was a great model for a feminist. But you're saying there's something more than that. You're saying he was God. You are asserting that he was a divine being who came to earth to sacrifice himself so he obviously wouldn't care about pissing a few people off, and that he had absolute knowledge. If he had absolute knowledge, he would know that oppression of women was going to continue. He would know that there was going to be marital rape, that marriage was going to remain an institution of ownership, that people would use his dogmas to justify a system in which the idea of loving a woman as Christ loved the church means that the man has dominion over the woman, means that she is to be subservient, means that her options are to be limited, and she is to be kept in the role of a homemaker, even if she wants to embrace another role much more. It, he would know that his ideology would be used to deny her reproductive freedom, would be used to deny woman all this liberty. And he would argue against it when he was here. He would have made claims specifically in favor of gender equality. He wouldn't have done some kind acts for women that were possibly quasi-anachronistic if you're trying to interpret it in a feminist light. He would have explicitly endorsed feminism because that's what he'd do if he wanted to really decrease the suffering of women.